Good morning. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for this, your introduction. And uh, uh, dear colleagues, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers, the president of the conference, uh, the honorary president of the conference, and uh, my friend, Dr. Hisham Ghazali, for organizing this very uh, nice uh, regional meeting uh, on breast uh, cancer for the 10th year to the row. And it's becoming bigger and bigger every day. Uh, we have a limited time, uh, 15 minutes, to present uh, our topics, so I elected to present to you today only two points uh, in regard of inflammatory breast cancer. The future perspectives, where are we going from today to the inflammatory breast cancer, and the last few slides for the current recommendations of treatment. As everybody knows, inflammatory breast cancer has been recognized as early as 1924 as a clinical entity in breast cancer. In fact, 2.5% of, of all breast cancers in the United States are inflammatory. And uh, in, uh, in uh, references, we would, we would find something like 1 to 6% worldwide. It is an extremely aggressive form of locally advanced breast cancer with a poor prognosis and it is uh, characterized and defined by a particular clinical pathological entity. It's rapidly progressive, typically refractory to azor hormone treatments or even chemotherapy. It's highly angiogenic, angioinvasive, and uh, with highly potential for metastasis. And uh, its uh, aggressive behavior makes it a specific entity in breast cancer. If we go to the region, uh, we, we had uh, some epidemiology from the region, and in fact, uh, all the epidemiology from the region would mainly come from Tunisia, and uh, they have been published by our friend and colleague present here, uh, Professor Hamouda Boussen, and it shows that in our region, uh, 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 inflammatory breast cancer tended to be at high proportion of the, of the, of the patients. In fact, in the, in the older present, in the older publications, it went up to nearly 50% of the patients, 30 to 50% of the patients of Tunisia had inflammatory breast cancer. Fortunately, the incidence of breast cancer have been decreasing of inflammatory breast cancer have been increasing with time, and uh, re in recent publication, as we see, it is around 5.7% among the breast cancer in Tunisia. Uh, some of as an explanation would be that this decrease in inflammatory breast cancer in Tunisia was in parallel with the improvement of the socioeconomic conditions in Tunisia, as we see, with the GDP, uh, you know, going up uh, you see that the inflammatory breast cancer incidence was going down. Uh, in fact, inflammatory breast cancer will tend to have negative hormone receptors and nearly positive HER2 explanation. It is a, a expression, it is a, highly it is a highly proliferative disease, and uh, there are uh, molecular markers. We need to see these molecular markers as identifying a worse prognosis of this disease. If we look into our future perspective, let's go to comprehensive genomic profiling of these patients. Uh, this is uh, one publication from 2015, where 53 inflammatory breast cancer were studied, and where in these patients, as you see, there were a lot of genomic, of genomic, uh, uh, of genomic alterations. In fact, TP53, uh, PY3K, MIG, RB2, FGFR1, BRCA2, and P10, among others, were highly uh, identified in this population. This means that a, a percentage of these patients have multiple alteration, and this high frequency of clinically relevant genomic alterations raises the possibility to identify targets and targeted therapy, which might lead to a more personalized uh, treatment which can be developed for those patients. In another, in another publication, more recently in 2016, uh, in this particular uh, publication, 26 patients with uh, inflammatory breast cancer were evaluated and had their uh, uh, next generation analysis uh, in order to see if there is any modification in these alterations within the treatment. In fact, in this particular publication from GLOW, uh, 
patients had uh, HER2 positive inflammatory breast cancer, and they were treated with a combination of afatinib plus or minus vinorelbin. As, and as you see in yellow, uh, the alteration did not change too much in the cohort of these patients before, during, and after, and after the, the treatment. This also raises the possibility to target those alterations and maybe targeting those alterations will lead to a better uh, response of those, of those patients. And as you see in this cartoon, there were a high mutation load and it was heterogeneous. As you see from the colors, there are multiple colors and there are, you know, in all the patients, these are the patients here. As you see, the, the somatic mutations we had, some high, uh, some high loads in the somatic mutations, and this might, uh, might lead to, to, to imagining that these patients can have, uh, can have maybe uh, an impact if they are treated by immunotherapy. And if we compare the heterogeneity of these mutations between uh, classical, uh, classical breast cancer or non-inflammatory breast cancer and inflammatory breast cancer, as you see, this is a load of these mutations in the inflammatory breast cancer, and these are the loads of mutations in the non-inflammatory breast cancer, and it is statistically significant. The difference is statistically significant. And if you look into the one single mutation that we see in those patients, you would we would see that TP53 mutation is the mutation that is most usually found in those inflammatory breast cancer. Is it all? No. As also I reviewed the literature, uh, I found that there have been some studies which was made on the mesenchymal stem cells which can mediate the clinical phenotype of inflammatory breast cancer. And in fact, in these two mice, you know, uh, one cohort of mice was infected with uh, a, a, a particular uh, can breast cancer cell type. And in the second mice, you know, in the right and in the left, so in one part of the mice, it was added a mesenchymal chemical factor was added to these, to these injection. And in fact, when we had, when we looked into the part of the mice where mesenchymal factors were added, we see that there were a more aggressive, a more aggressive, a more aggressive development of breast, of, of uh, cancer, and specifically, you know, in the, in the skin of, of the mice. This yields to the development of the idea that there is a role in the micro, uh, of the micro environment in the development of, uh, of uh, inflammatory breast cancer. If you look into also in other studies in the macrophages, and it looks like if we add macrophage conditioned media to these cells when they are injected also in the cultures and even when they are injected to mice, also you will see that there is a enhancement in the migration and in the development of inflammatory breast cancer. This, this yields to the idea that inflammatory breast cancer is a subtype of breast cancer where there are a lot of mutations, where there is a role of the microenvironment, where mesenchymal growth factors are important, where macrophages are important. So uh, there is a specific profile for these patients. These uh, tumors appear to be enriched in macrophage and in stromal mesenchymal. And, uh, you know, we need to understand their profiling in order maybe to develop uh, more potent drugs in the future. And if we look uh, even uh, uh, more into the development and the pathogenic of, of inflammatory breast cancer, we can uh, conclude that we need also to have a look on the proteonomic, on the metabolic, on the epigenetic, on the immunologic, and the microenvironment studies in order to be able to develop a new uh, strategies in the treatment of inflammatory breast cancer. So as I previously said, the high mutation load in inflammatory breast cancer suggests a role of for checkpoint inhibitors. Uh, sorry if it is very small and not seen from the back, but this is a recent publication in 2017 where we have in this table uh, at least four clinical trials who have been uh, testing the role of immunotherapy, either immunotherapy alone, pembrolizumab, atezolizumab, and avalumab, or uh, the combination of atezolizumab with nap paclitaxel in uh, cohorts of inflammatory breast cancer relapsed 
inflammatory breast cancer. And as you see in the last one, the atezuzumab and the napaglitaxel, it was only 32 uh, triple negative breast cancer, but these were refractory patients and uh, the overall response rate was something like 38% with 44% uh, stable disease. So it looks like maybe looking into this directions of immunotherapy and combination of chemotherapy with immunotherapy might be the way to go in the future in order to better treat inflammatory breast cancer. So these were my future directions, mainly on the on the burden of, of, of genomic alterations and the eventual role of targeted therapy in triple negative breast cancer, in inflammatory breast cancer. I was impressed by the triple negative breast cancer previous presentation. This is why I continued on TNBC. But, you know, we need the new guidelines for the treatment of inflammatory breast cancer. Currently in the guidelines, this is the most recent publication from uh, the American Joint Committee on Cancer. This is the staging of 2017. The, dios the diagnostic criteria needs to have at least uh, four components. Rapid onset of breast erythemia, edema, and or pod orange, and or warm breast with or without the underlying palpable mass. Duration of the history, no more than six months, not a very long history. Erythema, occupying at least one third of the breast, and a pathologic confirmation of the invasive carcinoma. So as you see, these are very strict definitions of the inflammatory breast cancer, and I think this is why year after year, the percentage and the incidence of those, of those breast cancer has uh, diminished. In the guidelines, I have seen at least one single particularity differentiating the inflammatory breast cancer from the other locally advanced breast cancer is that uh, the main exception is that breast conservation treatment and sentinel lymph node biopsy are non-appropriate in the management of these patients even in the presence of strong response to neoadjuvant uh, therapy. Maybe it will change to the future, but at least till now, the recommendation is not to pursue a conservative surgery for these patients, neither to perform sentinel lymph node dissection. But I, I am sure that in, in major cancer centers, they are trying to develop lesser, less aggressive, less aggressive uh, attitude in the surgery, but at least this is a recommendation that, that did not change for a while uh, till now. If we go into the NCCN guidelines for 2017, and if we look into them, there is not really something different between the IBC uh, and the classical locally advanced breast cancer. At least, at, uh, of course, a metastatic workup is warranted at the beginning of the treatment. Uh, genetic counseling for the patients is also, is also highly recommended. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, patients are submitted to pre-operative uh, uh, systemic treatment, including uh, uh, anthracycline, taxanes, and taxanes are highly preferred in these, uh, in these patients. And if the patient have a response, as you see, total mastectomy with, uh, uh, with uh, 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 axillary lymph node dissection is warranted. And uh, if there is no response, you know, you need to go to indiv individualizing the treatment of those patients. In fact, those patients have a very poor prognosis if they do not respond at the beginning uh, to, the, to your treatment. So as in conclusion, and um, I am on time, multimodality clinical management have improved the survival and uh, tried to find cures for patients with inflammatory breast cancer. The five years overall survival with the development of new uh, therapies, new combination chemotherapy, and uh, uh, in at least in HER2 positive patients has increased uh, to 62% uh, the survival of these patients. IBC still remains the most lethal entity of breast cancer with a very poor prognosis, patient, poor prognosis uh, with the development of micrometastatic uh, at the time of diagnosis compared to other locally advanced non-inflammatory breast cancer. And uh, I definitively and I highly think that the incorporation of more genomic studies profiling and the studies of microenvironment will yield to the introduction of new targeted therapies in the treatment of this very aggressive cancer. Thank you very much for your attention.
Professor Marwan for this elegant presentation. Now we'll proceed to the next lecture.